Lothar, we know the enormous importance of quantum physics in understanding the physical world. What are the deeper implications of that for the entire world that we live in? Normally people think that science only has to do with technology and has no other implications. But that is a misunderstanding. Already, you know, in the age of classical sciences, um, it, it is obvious that a society lives in accordance with its view of the world. When that view changes, social order has to change or problems arise. So the, the classical sciences, Newton's science was materialism. Only matter is real. Everything can be explained in terms of moving material particles. Mm -hmm. It's in a way a segregated world because each particle is on its own and they're, they're eternal. Uh, you know, he said, in the 18th century, one of the British philosophers said, well, science or what the world is like has nothing to do with how we should act. What is and is not the case has nothing to do with what we ought or ought not to do. So, you know, it's a segregation from, from way of life. Um, physics had nothing to do with philosophy. They had nothing to do with the arts. It was a segregated right. world. And when Darwin entered Newton's materialism into biology, life became that way. Because you either eat or you're eaten. You're on your own. And in a way, greed and aggression became virtues. Because if you're a nice guy, uh, sorry, you're a loser. Sorry, when I came into the United States and I was at faculty meetings and they were talking about uh, hiring someone, somebody might say, oh, he's a great guy, he's a very aggressive person. And I was always thinking, when I was raised in, in Europe, people said, don't be aggressive. <laughs> so there's a difference. Um, you see from this that the worldview of a science, you know, if aggression is the best thing, then, if you can sail out in the world and catch a few countries, well, you have to do that. If you can win in war, you should make a war. So now we have a new science, quantum science, quantum physics, quantum chemistry. It says that things are not separate, but they're all connected. We are connected in this sense. They also say that the world isn't what it looks like. Because, for example, when you follow the nature of part of matter down to the level of particles, all of a sudden matter is lost. Everything is connected. In a connected world, aggression is stupid. When all things are connected, if you cheat one, someone, it's dumb, you cheat yourself. You might say, well, I know a lot of people who are doing well cheating others. Yes, for a while, and then it is going to come back to them. And you know, you can look around, you can see how many old people who got their money the wrong way have miserable lives, not because they are poor, but the money doesn't help. So, um, in the last century, there was a revolution in science, in physics. It has to have an effect on our way of life, on our social order. But we are going on, certainly in this country, as though nothing had happened. As though having stuff and being aggressive is still the best way to go. So even though science is showing that there's this other way, this interconnected way, this wholeness of the universe, if you will, through quantum <laughs> physics, yeah. you say the application is not there. And, and, and the reason is that there's no relationship. I mean, that's the argument that can be given against it, that, right. that uh, whatever the science says at some, at some uh, uh, lower microscopic level has no relationship on how people deal with each other. People have always had wars, always had aggressiveness, no right. difference now th than before. Because when they're growing up, they're still taught matter is the thing to go for. They're still taught the ancient view 
We do not teach in our, our schools first quantum physics, quantum theory, we teach classical physics. You think that would make the difference between how people act? Yes, I think so. Because... What world do you live in? Yeah, what world do I live in? No, I think so because when people grow up, still in our schools, we teach them materialism, classical physics. We teach them evolution of, you know, of Darwin and... Um, but that's true. Darwinism is true. Yes, except I think, you know, he made a mistake and that is that he said being aggressive and, and going for others is the main thing. But for example, I believe that evolution is not the adaptation of life forms to their environment, but the adaptation of our mind to increasingly complex forms in a cosmic realm of forms. We can understand more and more complex things and like in quantum physics, they show us that everything is connected. If we live in a world that is connected, then cheating others, being aggressive, like I said, you know, is stupid because you cheat yourself. So you are generalizing from what's happening at the most microscopic levels and applying that way of thinking to the highest level that we know, which is human sociology and human interactions. Yes. And, and what is the justification for, for doing that? Well, if you look, look at history, changes in science already, always had changes in society, except the one was going you know, much later. Okay, but the changes were because it impacted specific technologies that had direct applications, electricity or uh, uh, airplanes or uh, yes, bombs that's, that's or whatever. Cool. They had yeah. different impacts. on. But here you're saying the principle of what happens at the most microscopic jumps all these orders of magnitude and now affects human interactions and culture. I mean, it's, a nice, it's nice poetry, but it doesn't seem like reality. <clears throat> Yeah, I have to disagree. It's not poetry. <laughs> it's you can you can find facts because the the ancient science, Newton's science, didn't only translate into technology. It also translated into view of the world, into into philosophy, into ethics. Um, maybe you know it's a process that wasn't conscious, but it is one that's a fact. And if you look at the science before Newton, you find the same relationship between view of the world and view of how one should live. And so now we have a new science. It says the old, the old physics is wrong, or at least incomplete, essentially incomplete. It should have an effect on how we live. But since we don't teach it to our, our children when they grow up, it isn't happening, but it should happen.